Hi everyone and welcome back to our series of screencasts for anthropology and world problems being offered at Commonwealth University of Pennsylvania. In this particular screencast I'll be going into part 2b measures of wealth and poverty picking up where we left off looking at absolute poverty lines to more relative poverty lines and amongst these is the societal poverty line. These uh, poverty lines are typically higher in richer countries and lower in poorer ones, reflecting the relative nature of national assessments of who is considered poor. The societal poverty line is more closely aligned with national definitions of poverty than other proposed relative lines. By this relative measure, societal poverty has fallen steadily since 1990, but at a much slower pace than absolute poverty. So in order to represent this graphically, the World Bank's 2020 Poverty and Shared Prosperity Report, Reversals of Fortune, notes uh, this graphic graphically through the representation of poverty rate as well as the number of poor. And we can see here the top line indicating societal poverty line. And again, that's a relative standard. And then the IPL or international poverty line or abject poverty at $1.90 a day. And again, marked improvement here uh, along these both percentage wise as well as the number of individuals. Uh, le much less progress has been made in confronting or dealing with the societal poverty line though. Here you can see the societal poverty line divided by region, number of poor per region. And again, you know, if we're talking about thousands of millions here, we're essentially talking about billions. So, you know, you could read this chart and look at this and say, okay, well, this is 2,000 million or 2 billion people in terms of number of poor. Okay, um, some other considerations to take a look at and consider. The richest 5% of the world's people receive more than 100 times the income of the poorest 5%. The richest 1% received more income than the poorest 50% of the world's people. And in 1820, Western Europe's per capita income was only about three times that of Africa's. By 1992, it was 13 times. And um, as Sereno notes in Global Problems, and this is where all this information comes from, that more equal societies fare better on a host of social measures than more unequal societies. And we certainly see that with the uh, development index provided by the United Nations. Of course, as we've talked about before, wealth inequality in the United States rem remains a persistent problem. The video linked up on your course learning management system page does show uh, this video wealth inequality in the United States and looks at the difference between what the actual distribution is, what Americans think the distribution of wealth is, and then what the ideal distribution and, and such a, a wide span from the ideal to what people think it is and then even further uh, to the actual distribution of wealth and you can see this little um, scope here this little uh, eyesight thing to indicate that the middle class is barely uh, on the, the actual distribution of uh, the wealth in the United States so um, certainly something to think about there. From Forbes' 2022 World Billionaire List, we certainly see uh, wealth uh, being consolidated, and Forbes called this a mixed bag with a number of billionaires worldwide falling, but 40% 40, 40 of those who remained got even richer. Uh, and so here you can see the, the richest of the rich, and you know if you compare this list to several years ago, Warren Buffett was at the very top of this with about just half of the net worth of what he has uh, today. Um, and of course, you can see Elon Musk here, Jeff Bezos, um, and then this uh, the fortune uh, made in France here with fashion and retail industry, then Bill Gates. So, and the other thing to keep in mind here in terms of wealth concentration is the geographic distribution here. We can clearly see the United States has uh, the highest uh, number of individuals uh, as the world's top 10 uh, billionaires. And so the, uh, the, you know, the question is, is where, where do people fall into this? And there are a number of different uh, metrics online. One of these is the Wall Street Journal's What Percent Am I? based on income as well as based on wealth and wealth accumulation. 
Um, and so, you know, th this story about the 1% and the 99%, uh, you know, you can see plenty of examples. And we'll talk about some specific ethnographic examples in the next screencast. But here you can see, uh, you know, this idea of telling the story of the 99% or uh, this idea of uh, individuals that you know, do not necessarily have the resources that they need uh, in order to, um, to thrive. Uh, so the US real average uh, after-tax income from the Congressional Bu Budget Office uh, up until around 2007, 2008 here, shows that the top 1%, again, uh, pretty massive increases in terms of their uh, income, their after-tax income. Uh, versus um, all uh, segments of society, um, the the lowest quintile, of course, faring the worst here, um, and then you have the the, uh, the the relative distribution overall. Um, in terms of economic downturns, the, you know the Great Recession, as it's sometimes dubbed, or the economic downturn that corresponded to the global food crisis that we'll talk about in the hunger and food insecurity section. What we saw during this time period was a real shift in people's spending habits um, and uh, because of the change that had occurred. Um, and uh, so people were spending more um, on um, things like processed vegetables and education and health care uh, and less on things like new cars and trucks, right, gas, alcohol, uh, clothing, food at restaurants, food away from home. Uh, food in general. Um, uh, uh, so, um, you know, real um, cutting back on spending, eliminating potentially what's um, desired and not needed, uh, but also sometimes, as we'll see later through the discussion of the work that I did with Phil Loring, and when the heat or eat crisis, people having to make decisions about whether uh, to eat food or heat their homes properly. What we do see uh, is a consolidation of both net worth as well as financial wealth in the top 1% in the United States. So, um, and then the next 19%, so the bottom 80% are at the top of this chart here, and you can see that the, the amount of financial wealth as well as net worth uh, of those individuals has tended to uh, decrease over time relative to the the top 20% and the top 1%, uh, which is pretty much maintaining their position all the way throughout. So there was a lot of discussion about um, the rebound from the Great Recession, right? And uh, the uh, Pew Research Center did some work on this and came up with um, this net change, uh, change in net worth per household between 2009 and 2011. And what they found was that although we had a recovery overall within the economy, what this effectively did was consolidate wealth with the wealthiest 7%. So a minus 4% change in net worth between 2009 and 2011 for the lower 93% of households in the United States, while the wealthiest 7% saw their household fortune go up 28%. What this meant was that the share of aggregate household wealth owned by the upper 7% went from 56% all the way up to 63% in just two short years. So when we're talking about recovery on a larger scale, it hides some of the uh, distribution issues overall. Fast forward um, through this uh, between 2011 and 2019, again from the Pew Research Center, um, the global middle class expanded rapidly uh, and poverty uh, fell sharply during uh, this time period. Um, so um, pretty dramatic uh, increases here uh, overall. The COVID-19 downturn curbed growth in the global middle class as well as increased poverty sharply in 2020. And we see this with our discussion of um, the international poverty rate as well and the impacts that the COVID-19 has had the COVID-19 pandemic has had on that. Um, and so here's the estimated change in the number of people in each income tier due to the global recession in 2020 in millions. So 62 million fall out of high income, uh, 36 million out of upper middle income, 54 um, million out of middle income, 
the low income adds 21 million people and poor um, down to uh, or up to 131 million people. Um, so the, the ch globally, most are either poor or low income and the pandemic likely drove the numbers higher in 2020. So you see post uh, pandemic estimate and pre pandemic uh, projection. And again, the, the negative impacts of COVID-19 coupled with a global recession overall.